Hi. Thank thanks. you so much. Oh, thank you. Really, thank you. Thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you, Ali, for this and Christine uh, for as well for, for your help and Bella too. And thank you to all the artists who uh, I'm here with uh, and to you all here in the audience. Thank you for your interest and support and engagement within art. And, and it's, I wish I could have uh, seen every single um, installation of this. It sounds really fascinating and exciting. Sarah, and, they're um, all I, online on the ICA Social Club auction website. You can go yes. see them <laughs> in your free time with your professional life and your children and child <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, well, we're so grateful. I know the Bay Area audience knows you a little bit as you're represented by Claudia Ullman Siegel. And I know we have some of your collectors in the audience tonight, but I'm you and I have not done a studio visit. And I know you haven't done one with Christine. So this is really special for us as well. So thanks. Yeah, I'm excited. Take it away. Well, Tell us a little bit about yourself and the work. Well, thank you. I will turn over to um, images and I have some notes prepared just to stay succinct. But the, the last thing I wanted to say was I think it is an incredible resource to have these uh, online. And now that I know, especially that I can go see it, but that is one of the wonderful things about this new scenario uh, that we are all navigating and, and learning to work with is the great tremendous archive of material that this is generating and the ability to um, share your work with those. I mean, like this is quite special. I'm on the East Coast, but getting to speak with people in the West Coast too. Um, and as a teacher, I really appreciate it because all of this content is really fantastic for students. Uh, as well as all the many members of the community. So I'm gonna um, hit play and then, oh wait, sorry, one last thing. Yeah, you share screen. screen. Yeah. Yeah, and then. Um, I know we can confess to our audience that this has been our night of technical ooh. difficulties, but this looks amazing. All right, thank you so oh, much. I'm so, I'm so excited. excited. <laughs> yeah, no. So then hopefully it's just a, right currently um, a title page and um, I'm focusing primarily on this new series that I showed for the first time with Claudia in an, in an OVR in, um, that launched in January that um, is entitled Ancient Woman 2022, made this year, but the, the, it's a proposal of kind of an ongoing series. And I'm working with my photographic prints that I, um, I capture uh, currently various statuary based in several different um, uh, institutions throughout the world. And I am applying for the first time pigment, um, which comes in the form of watercolor, gouache, and then also um, makeup to the surface of these images. So these are um, unique works. They're small scale. Uh, I've begun to work on slightly larger scale works, but I really enjoyed returning to a smaller scale of photography and also returning to a practice that I actually began when I first started exhibiting when I was creating um, more of these kinds of photographic assemblages where I was hand painting photographs and combining them with sculptural forms and then capturing them and presenting them as photographs. So um, I work between photography and sculpture in general, but recently I've been focusing more on the interrelationship between the two and on really this idea of this ongoing kind of eternal mediation and remediation that is happening between these figures and forms and um and their imaging Amazing. so it i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm reading notes from my phone excuse me but again it's for an intention to be succinct because i want to be respectful of everyone's time and energy um and uh so what's been exciting too about just showing this series with claudia first was that my uh last solo exhibition with Claudia um, in 2019 was uh, a series called Roman Women. And so this Ancient Women comes out of that series, which I actually began in 2012. And I've been working intermittently with these um, uh, figures. And so I began photographing Roman statuary in 2012 with a residency in Rome at Fondazione Memo and have continued to work with ancient female figures as a source of inspiration intermittently over the past nine to 10 years now. The new series of work employs images of Roman statuary, in particular, several repeated images of statues of Aphrodite from the National Archaeological Museum in Naples. 
as well as variations on the same head of a Roman statue from the Louvre in Paris, which this is one of them pictured here right now. This presentation embraces and espouses the fluidity and increased resonance of photographic images as they form, transform, and unform across time and context. Equally significant as it has evolved over time, Roman women and now ancient women is a series in its various iterations has become a means for me to consider and reconsider the female body as a shifting site of production, reproduction, reclamation, and discourse. Okay. So during my, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that like talking and operating a, a, an arrow button on a computer is sometimes a little bit beyond my skill set. So I'm going to try to make sure I'm advancing images while. Um, That's okay. We're sort of mesmerized into these images and those are really beautiful and articulate ways to begin to understand this practice. Thank you. Well, thank you. So during my initial residency and, and in return visits to these forms, I experienced more intimately than ever before the physical presence and transformative nature of these sculptures in my observation of traces of original pigment on the statue's marble surfaces. Impacted by this encounter, I saw in their projected polychromy and current open blank forms, the simultaneity of their existence as both image and object symbol and sculpture, housing many histories and unknown futures. And since I have been exploring different ways and means of investigating and understanding the complex communications presented by these ancient female forms. Collected, displayed, and suspended from their original culture and context, these figures are both full of meaning and emptied of it, allowing a new space for the viewer's individual projections of meaning. Circulated in antiquity and up through this present moment, they, be they began as elements of a proto-photographic system that continues a long and expanded sense of the networked image. The doubling and layering or stacking of images and forms in some of these works is a small gesture towards this. So in particular, this image is of Aphrodite taken in at Naples. And then within the photographic image, I digitally collage them together. And then I'm applying this pigment on top. Uh, and so I think th this is another sort of important point that for, for me that I've been looking at, not just kind of my questions over sort of like the ongoing evolution of these forms, but that the statuary of antiquity were frequently the first subjects of early photographic images. And with this, the sculpture and photography, and in particular classical sculpture, have been interconnected since photography's invention. In some sense, these sculptures and the images of them exist in a continuous loop of mediation, mirroring the image scrolls, feeds, and flows of now. Current stagings of these sculptures often invoke historical elements, often involve historical elements and modern replacement parts. I noticed this in Naples at the National Ar Archaeological Museum when I was photographing. Many of these sculptures sometimes had plaster facsimiles combined together with original fragments to present some sorts, sort of history intact. Sometimes the marble shoulder supports that hold the heads and portrait busts are from another sculpture. So really this kind of very interesting kind of combinatory practice with yeah. these forms. And they were, uh, you know, often originally in ancient times made of combinatory parts and made by workshops and then disseminated. So this hybridity of production and reproduction also speaks to me of the cyborg bodies of now that oscillate between virtual and corporeal existences. And then the, the just to pull back a second to, um, I, I, I have a blank and then I'm going to some related works to these painted works, unless we want to kind of dwell and, and ask some questions about these, but these works really come out of uh, a larger series too, but Ali, yeah. I'll check No, in no, I think you have time. a couple more minutes and I will just say okay. sort of the conceptual, historical and art historical examination of both media and modes of making and then combining it with this kind of gender specific narrative is what to me makes these works so deeply rich. I didn't realize that part of what I was looking at when I've been looking at the one work we have at the ICA was makeup. The sort of shimmer effect is pretty extraordinary. 
And as you think about historical images and our ability to see or not see clearly looking backwards, the kind of obscuring effect, both of your kind of mode of production, and then that overlay is very powerful and, and really warrants seeing it in person, to be honest. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you. I was going to flip back to one of the ones with the more metallic that, as you said, yeah. that then, because, but the one that, that you do have is especially refractive and yeah. That's what I really enjoyed about the makeup for me that it's like, it's both um, an embrace of the kind of ancient practice of adornment that came along mm -hmm. with these sculptures, but also to me is a form of defacing and a pushing back against kind of all of the complicating me yeah. meaning within these forms. And then lastly, I'd say it's also about this threshold of kind of like self ideation, like that, mm -hmm. you know, makeup has now become a space of self realization and, yeah. um, uh, that that's exciting to me because it is it is pushing into this larger concept of kind of the sense of self being much more nuanced and self-formed yeah. and so kind of pushing against these and and exploring this interrelationship between self and society that yes is, is and I, really I feel like we should probably wrap up but yeah. I do what I now I feel like I have to say one thing because I think the history of sort of looking at makeup and painting practice and like even thinking of like Manet and toilettes and the maquillage which felt oftentimes like this form that women had to kind of like attain an ideal I love this notion of like re authenticating makeup and appropriating it as a form of self-ideation and kind of like self-declaration and ownership and authorship. So I'll say that. And then maybe one more, one or two quickly and we'd have to wrap up. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, last thing. Yeah, it's just this sort of, all of this is an act of exploration and reclamation and discourse. It's really meant to yeah. be about opening up these kind of well, you know, often represented and re-photographed and reproduced forms to a new space of engagement and dialogue both with them, but also with the larger community surrounding it. And one that I hope is that is reciprocal and open. And again, I'm very grateful to partake in that dialogue here. So thank you very much. Sarah, and thank you so, so much. And I invite everyone to come try to see this work in person, either with us or with Claudia. Um, it's great to have you here. And thanks for joining in what I know is a little bit late for you. So have a great night. We'll see you later. Well, thank we'll you definitely all. See you soon. And I look forward to hearing everybody else too. Thanks. Take care. Have a good Thanks, night. Sarah. Bye, Sarah.